So today, we have a crazy video. Apparently, we have every shot Kendrick took at Drake at the pop-out concert explained. If you want to check out the original video, uh, it was made by Pearl Fountain. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. In 2011, the West Coast came together to pass the torch to Kendrick. And 13 years later, Kendrick brought it full circle and brought out every West Coast legend to dance on Drake's grave and cement him as the king of the coast. Even getting Dr. Dre to kick off his first of many performances of Not Like Us. Let me know if y'all actually think, who y'all actually think won in the comments just below. Do you feel like Kendrick won? Or do you feel like Drake won? I feel like it's gonna be a debate. But at the end of the day, the day gonna win. Now let me stop, but um, I can't play this audio. I can't play this. The point of this was to show how much culture and heritage Kendrick comes from and the legacy that he's continuing. And nothing proves that he's the king of the West Coast more than his ability to bring every West Coast artist from Tyler to Steve Lacey to YG to Roddy Rich to all the original members of Black Hippie to a single show at the Forum, including West Coast basketball stars like LeBron, Russ, DeMar DeRozan. And DeMar was on Toronto's Raptors, Drake's hometown team, but came home to Cali, as Kendrick said on Not Like Us. It's to show how him being the king of the West Coast means a lot more in hip hop and in hip hop culture than Drake being the god of the six. And it was a show that was really a history lesson about LA from the very beginning. A way to Wait a minute, he just said came home to Cali. DeRozan. When did DeRozan ever play with the Lakers or the Clippers? Am I missing something? I get what you're saying though. I, I get what point you're trying to make. City to heal it from the tragedies of losing Kobe, Nipsey, and many others. We done lost a lot, a lot of homies to this music shit. A lot of homies to some street shit. Unity from east side of motherfucking LA. Crips, clubs, power rules. This shit is special, man. Shining hope on the West Coast future with inspiration from its past. Using moments like news samples before Tommy the Clown's performance. Our first story looks at how this... Samples that talk about his influence in LA through dance. Responsible for inventing crumping, he had a huge impact on lowering crime and violence and being an inspiration and hope for the youth. Like he said, Y'all, I don't know how old a lot of people are just watching this video, but uh, <laughs> crumping, let me tell you, in like 07, 08, before then, obviously, but. During that time, 07, between 07 and like 2011, bruh, if you, <laughs> Crumpin' was just on another, uh, a whole nother level at the parties. <laughs> before, probably a little bit before then, but yeah. I'm not that old. I was, I was just uh, little and I just remember, you know. <laughs> everyone together a lot more than it was about any back and forth this is but drake happened to be the common enemy that let that unity happen letting kendrick basically film a whole music video for the song right on stage full of the legends who performed and popped out to the show like if he uses this for the music video after this i would not be surprised turning the drake beef into such a special moment for the coast was a great way to put a bow on the whole feud and turn it into something positive but tonight was still a show full of subtle and direct disses towards drake's attempts at colonizing west coast and american rap culture first off he did the show on Juneteenth after calling out Drake for rapping about Kendrick trying to free the slaves through his music. No, I'm not gonna lie, bro. How do y'all feel about Juneteenth? I gotta know. And if you're a brew watching this video, I already know how you feel about it. But for for the whole audience, how do y'all feel about Juneteenth? Um, I can't, like I said, I can't play audio. It's, did. And Kendrick made a point out of stopping to take the picture, making me think in a way he's calling back to the Tepipa Butterfly album cover, which had this dead white guy at the bottom, kind of saying that this is Drake and this is the West Coast right now. During his performance... Is that what he said? Called out Drake for using AI Snoop and Pac on TaylorMade Freestyle, saying... I'm so young, I gotta be careful. Nobody disrespect the West Coast, huh? Oh, y'all ain't gonna let nobody mock and imitate our legends, huh? He also changed the line in Euphoria to say, Give me two pop we Oh. Basically said, Give me give me two pops ring back in. I might give you a little respect. I can't play it though. 
Matters music video. He played all the disses except for Meet the Grams, which was sad because I wanted to see how LeBron would react to Hey LeBron, keep the family away, and the second half of 616 in LA, which was sad. Yeah, yeah, he stopped it right before he uh, was about to say Ack meme. So I wanted to see how Ack would react to I could see the vibes on Ack, even he looking compromised. Kendrick also used the set list to rework songs from Damn, specifically DNA and Element, as Drake disses, playing them right after opening with Euphoria and emphasizing the parts that could be directed at Drake. But the disses came way before before Kendrick even came on. Right before Mustard set, we got James Brown's song, The Payback, the song Kendrick samples on King Kunta, which he performed later in the night, notably sampling the line. I can dig yeah. yeah, basically said I can dig rapping, but a, a rapper with a ghost rider. <laughs> you see it on the screen. You see it on the screen. But a rapper with a ghost rider, what happened? I swear I wouldn't tell. Most of y'all sharing bars. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, oh, can't play it. Directly referencing Drake, something Mustard backed up in his set by playing Juvenile's 1998 classic, Back That Ass Up. Oh, man. Fuck yeah, I'm a big time nigga. Yeah, okay. All right. What's this Drake song? Can't even remember the name of the song. I'm pretty sure. Uh, whatever. <laughs> I know that was uh back that thing up. But Drake, I know he sampled it uh practicing. Don't practicing. Practice or whatever the name of the song. Practice. <laughs> Sampling this TikTok where this girl said what needed to happen after the beef was a renaissance of DJ Mustard. In other words, a renaissance of West Coast sound and West Coast hits. When every song on the radio was on a mustard beat, we were a proper country. It was happier times, the closest we have ever been to true unity. <laughs> she made a pretty good analysis. That's a hey, that's real, man. They 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 they, they see him, they call it how they see it. Because I feel like this show is going to be the reason that West Coast hits are going to be back on the radio for years to come. With Not Like Us hitting 2 million units sold tonight. During Mustard's set, he brought out YG, even though Drake name-dropped him as being one of his ties to the streets on Family Matters. Not a good look, man. Not a good look. Back out for Not Like Us shows that if that was ever true, it's just not anymore. I think it's also interesting that he brought Tyler out when, if you remember, Tyler brought Drake out in an LA festival and Drake got booed for half the set. The show was also partly produced by Dave Free, showing that despite the rumors that Drake tried to spread in Family Matters, Kendrick still stands by his childhood friend. And let's be honest, if Drake tried to do a show like this in The Six, he'd have to bring out Toronto All Stars like Smiley. Now, see, it's little stuff like that that you just you gotta know. If you, if you know, then you know, but if you don't, then... Gene from Jimmy Neutron, the dude from Wagwan Delilah. Uh, he could bring out Nav and The Weeknd if he wasn't also beefing with him. I really want to see him try and sell tickets to some shit like that. Let me know what I missed down below, and as always, subscribe for quick, straight... Hold on, who are you talking about when he said bringing out Nav and The Weeknd, the dude from Toronto? Who? He'd have to bring out Toronto All-Stars like Smiley... And let's be honest, if Drake tried to do a show like this in the six, he'd have to bring out Toronto All Stars like Smiley, Sheen from Jimmy Tron, the dude from Wagwan Delilah. Uh, he could bring out Nav. Bro, do you just say he can bring out Nav? Do you not know what's going on right now? You think Nav is about to go perform when the weekend is going at Drake right now? Not happening. The weekend, if he. The weekend? <laughs> the weekend himself? Also beefing with him. I really want to see him try and sell tickets to some shit like that. Let me know what I missed down below, and as always, subscribe. Yeah, the weekend switched up and hopped back on Drake's side real quick. A lot of people will lose, in my opinion, will lose a lot of respect for him. Even though it's not our business, but at the same time, if you if you keeping up with these artists and you picking a side and. Looking at the moral aspect of it, it would look kind of crazy, but let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below. If you want to see more videos like this, also let me know in the comment section below. Um, try to stay consistent on this thing, so make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that sub button, and we out.